Welcome to my Secret Place Devotion with Oyix Alfred. The Word of God is alive and equipped to change your life. Morning. Have you lost something? Maybe something spiritual, maybe even time, maybe a job, something that is very important to you. The Bible tells us that God is actually a restorer. So George chapter 2 verse 25, God promises to restore to us the years that the locust, the canker worm, the caterpillar and the palmer worm has eaten. Thank you Lord for who you are to us. You are a lot of things to us. But Father, we appreciate you today for being a restorer. Lord, I ask for your people. Is there anyone who has lost time? Who has lost money? Who has lost a position? Who has lost something very crucial? Lord, I ask that you restore in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Do you know that following Jesus as a disciple actually comes at a cost? A very heavy cost. Most people actually don't know this. They are not told this. And so when the cost of following Jesus starts coming up, they are surprised. And sometimes they are very discouraged and they begin to go back because they were not told ahead of time that there is a price to pay for being a disciple of Jesus. If you read from 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 12, the Bible is very clear about what is contained in the discipleship package. He says, yes, all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. He didn't say may suffer persecution. He says shall. is a definite word. He says shall suffer persecution. In fact, if you read it from New Living Translation, he says, you know how much persecution and suffering I have endured. This is Paul talking. He was actually writing to Timothy. So he begins that sentence by telling him how much persecution he's going through. He says, you know all about how much I have been persecuted in Antioch, in Iconium, in Lystra. But the Lord rescued me from it all. Meaning that from city to city, from place to place, though Paul was doing the right thing, he was obeying God. He wasn't doing anything wrong. However, persecution kept on coming from place to place. In verse 12, he now tells us that it's not just him, Paul, who's going to experience persecution. He says, yes, and everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Why do we need to suffer persecution if we live a godly life? Because the moment you start living a godly life, your life will become directly opposite to the world. You're not going to like the things the world likes anymore. Your tastes, your priorities, everything about you is supposed to change. So the truth is that if the world finds you attractive, there's nothing to complain about you. You're just like the world. You want to look into the quality of the Christianity that you have because the Bible is very, very clear. He said, as long as you are living a godly life, it will trigger persecution because you can't lie like the rest. You can't function like the rest. There are many things they take normal and you can't do it because of your commitment to Jesus. So many people think that persecution is a bad thing and they are so afraid of it. But there's something the apostles knew about persecution. And that is why whenever they were persecuted, they were very excited. They were very happy and they counted it an honor to suffer for Jesus. In Acts chapter 5 verse 40, the Bible tells us about the disciples. They were flogged by the Sanhedrin. If I let me read it directly, it says, the others accepted his advice. They called in the apostles and they had them flogged. Then they ordered them never again to speak in the name of Jesus. And then they let them go. The apostles let the high council rejoicing that God had counted them worthy to suffer disgrace for the name of Jesus Christ. So if you see how the apostles took it, they understood that it was an honor to suffer disgrace for the sake of Jesus Christ. They put it there. They said, for God had counted them worthy to suffer. Meaning that if God allows persecution to come your way, he has counted you worthy. That's what the scripture is saying. Meaning that he has seen something about you, that you are a disciple, that you're not just following him based on lip service or just what you're saying with your mouth, but you genuinely are following him. And so the Bible says, God counts you worthy. Now, understanding the dynamics of persecution, Apostle Paul actually gave a consolation for people who are worried and concerned about persecution. He tells us that for every trouble you face because of Jesus, the Bible says it actually brings about a blessing and releases a weight of glory. Meaning that everything that you subject yourself to 
because of Jesus, it will not go unnoticed. It will be rewarded. So First Peter chapter 3 verse 13, it says, Now, who will want to harm you if you are eager to do good? Now, typically we would wonder the same thing as in, since I'm, I want to do good, since I don't want to lie, since I don't want to cheat, since I don't want to gossip, since I don't want to do all of those things, why should anybody want to harm me? That is exactly what Paul is asking here. But then he answers in verse 14, it says, But even if you suffer for doing what is right, God will reward you. So don't worry or be afraid of their threats. So what Paul is saying is that many times you will suffer for doing what is right. Don't ever think that you're doing what is right is going to generate all the applause, and all the good things. No, sometimes when you do the right thing, you will suffer persecution. And a lot of people are asking, why am I suffering persecution? Where is Jesus? He'll be standing right there, strengthening you, empowering you, but he will not stop the persecution. The reason is because for every time you're persecuted, you are gaining a very high reward in heaven. You know, your ranking is increasing in heaven because the highest reward always goes to those who are martyrs or those who have laid down their lives or those who have suffered a great deal because of their work with the Lord. So a lot of times Jesus will allow you to go through that, but he will strengthen you, he will equip you in such a way that you will not be discouraged because again, Jesus will not allow something that is too much for you to come to you. If you read from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17, again, he reads the same thing. He says, For our present troubles are small and won't last very long, yet they produce for us a glory that vastly outweighs them and will last forever. In other words, what Paul was saying is that whatever troubles a believer faces, there is glory attached to it and it will last forever. As a matter of fact, the only time that Jesus mentioned great reward was in connection to suffering or being persecuted as a disciple for his name's sake. Remember the Beatitudes in Matthew chapter 5, that chapter, Matthew chapter 5, Jesus was actually talking to the disciples, not the multitude. If you read from Matthew chapter before you get to the end, you notice that the Bible says, of course, he was talking to the multitudes and all that. Then Matthew chapter 5, the Bible says he climbed up a mountain and his disciples followed him and he began to say to the disciples, not to the multitude. So in verse 10 of Matthew chapter 5, he says, blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. He continues by saying, blessed are you when men shall revile you, persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. He said, rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted the prophets which went before you. So you see, for even doing the right thing, for living a righteous life, there will be arrows thrown at you, there will be stones thrown at you, all sorts. But Jesus said, whenever you notice that happening, he said, rejoice, be extremely glad. I think the way NLT puts it is beautiful. It captures the English perfectly. He says, God bless those who are persecuted for doing right for the kingdom of heaven is theirs god blesses you when people mock you and persecute you and lie about you and say all sorts of evil things against you because you are my followers in other words because you are my disciples he said be happy about it be very glad for a great reward awaits you in heaven and remember the ancient prophets were persecuted in the same way so what it means is that persecution triggers a blessing both in time and in eternity. A lot of times we don't understand how to trigger blessing. Those persecutions and the sufferings and the different things you go through because of your commitment to Jesus. There are people who lose certain jobs because they just can't stay in that job and you know continue to serve God because they know that being in that job automatically exposes them to all sorts of sin and crime and all of that. And so they choose something less rewarding in terms of financially but they are doing this because of Jesus. Some others will actually have that direct attacks on them because of their commitment to Jesus. Now, I'm not talking about suffering because of what you did wrong. You insulted somebody. You did all of that. Even though you're a Christian, that's not what triggers any blessing. You will pay for whatever it is you're doing that is not right, even though you're a Christian. But now, the Bible is discussing the things that because you are a Christian, you suffer loss, you lose certain things, you are persecuted, you're insulted, you're abused, you're doing all of those things. The Bible says there will be a blessing that is released on your life, both in time and in eternity. Teaching about discipleship without letting people know that discipleship comes with a package of persecution is teaching half gospel. So if you are committed and you are following Jesus, expect this to happen. On the flip side, if this is not happening to you, you want to check again the quality 
of your godliness or your righteousness quotient. You want to look at it again and be sure that you are living according to the tenets of the scripture. Thank you so much for listening. God bless you. Have a tremendous weekend. Don't forget, Night of Power is this evening. Make sure you join. Time is 5 p.m. GMT plus 1. You can follow by Instagram on the Yiks Alfred. You can listen by free conference call. The handle is Prophetic Virtual. You can also follow live on YouTube. The handle is The Oak House Church. Physically would be The Oak House Church. The venue is 112 Commercial Avenue. It is off by Macaulay Road in Yaba, Lagos. Get ready for God to change your life forever. God bless you. For other life-changing messages, you can now download the app Rev Oyik Speaks from Play Store for Android phone users or Apple Store for iOS users. You can also follow us on Instagram, YouTube, and Telegram, all on the handle Oyik's Alfred. <laughs>